You don't have to be a southerner, I found out, to enjoy grits. Now becoming more popular around the country and in top restaurants, this southern staple is enjoyed in numerous forms. Today, we have a very simple recipe that features smooth, creamy grits topped with broiled tomatoes and bubbling cheddar cheese, and if you like, some crispy bacon. And I'm just slicing two tomatoes. I'm making six ramekins with this recipe, six individual servings. And these tomatoes, I'm going to just put under the broiler to get cooked. I love broiled tomatoes and make them even tastier by putting a little bit of pepper on top, a little bit of salt, and a drizzle of olive oil. Just a teeny, teeny bit of olive oil. And these will cook slowly under a hot broiler. Now, in this skillet, two thick slices of bacon, just cut into little half-inch squares. They'll cook and get crispy. Cooking grits is really easy. Grits are simply dried corn or hominy, a type of corn treated with an alkali, and coarsely ground. This actually is a rather fine coarseness, and this is white corn. White corn and yellow corn have negligible differences in sweetness and nutritional content, but white is generally favored in the South. When cooking grits, make sure your water is really boiling and use a whisk. Pour the grits in slowly, gradually, and keep stirring so that you don't have any lumps. So one cup of grits to four cups of boiling water. And keep an eye on the heat. If the pot gets too hot, the grits will burn, and that is not what we want. Now just sprinkle this in and stir. I have watched lots of people make grits, and it's very easy to do. Grits like this will take about five minutes. Gradually thickens. Now you can use crumbled bacon, and crumbled bacon is thin slices of bacon cooked, and then you can crumble those. But if the bacon is thickly sliced like this bacon, it's a little hard to crumble it. And don't buy pre-cooked bacon bits. There is no reason to do that. Fresh grits will last several months in your pantry if you keep them in the freezer in a tightly sealed bag. I keep them actually in quart plastic containers. To the grits, you're gonna add two tablespoons of butter, two generous tablespoons. And then to make these cheesy grits, add one and a half cups of grated cheddar. Now, as you add the cheddar, use a wooden spoon, not the whisk, because the whisk will get all stuck. And stir this. It'll melt right into those grits, making them very, very cheesy. Now, I had added no salt, no pepper. So right now, I'm going to add a goodly sprinkling of salt and a smaller sprinkling of pepper. There's the tomatoes. They've just gotten a little bit of color around the edge. Those are going to go on top of the grits. And the grits with the cheese and the butter can sit for a little while. If you want to keep it uh, longer than, oh, half an hour or so, I would put that in a bain-marie of hot water so that they will stay warm. So here is our bacon. Just drain it on a piece of paper towel, a brown paper bag. And now it's time to fill buttered ramekins. Butter because you don't want the grits to stick. And you also add a little bit more flavor to the grits. OK, I think those are nicely buttered. And spoon in your grits. Mm. They look good. Now, grits like this can be served for breakfast. You could put a little pile of grits on a plate and put a fried egg on top and a piece of country ham. That'd be good. Or you can make it a little fancier, as I'm doing, in a ramekin. And this can be served uh, not only for breakfast, but also for lunch. I really got to know a little bit more about grits when I visited my friend Sally down in Tennessee, and she took me to several wonderful stone mills that ground their own grits. It was just amazing to see corn being transformed from the kernel into a grain like this. 
So just clean up the edges a little bit and put your sliced tomatoes right on top. One has to be vegetarian. Actually, I'll make two vegetarian and the rest can have a sprinkling of this delicious smoky bacon. Mm, these look really good. Then grate a little bit more cheese. This is the white cheddar and sprinkle on top of the tomatoes. Just a half a cup or so. And these will go back under the broiler for approximately two minutes. Watch them carefully. This is oven proof where the dishes themselves, but you don't want anything to happen to them under a hot broiler. Hmm, I think these look good. And just a little bit of pepper. I love pepper. Cheddar's salty enough so you don't have to add any more salt. So under the broiler for two minutes. I hope you'll try this recipe. They're ready. Bubbling, very hot. Oh my gosh, these look great. Spectacular. Now let them cool a little bit before you try to move them. But these are ready to eat in the next five minutes.